Hello, everyone. Welcome to China Money Network. I'm Nina Xiang. Today, I'm with Liu Xing, partner at Sequoia Capital China. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time. So you look at AI projects in China, and what's your overall feel of how the AI sector in China is right now? Uh, I think the whole AI sector in China is in its nascent development stage. Uh, lots and lots of uh, good founders with a uh, strong background. Some of them came from academics, some of them came from uh, industries. Uh, they are all uh, obviously very uh, excited about the, the prospects of uh, uh, applying AI technology in different uh, applications. Uh, but overall speaking, I think it's still in its very early stage of development. The lots of the, lots of them are still experimenting right, with the technology and, 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 and how to uh, develop a, a niche product, for example, right, in, say, medical imaging. Right? Can we solve that specific small problem first, then expanding the uh, solution to other areas. What are some technology focuses that you look at? Is it autonomous driving? Is it you know precision medical uh, healthcare? Uh, what are some technology areas that you really focus on? All of the above, <laughs> right? So I think the uh, at this point, I think everybody is trying to explore right, what are the areas that they can apply the technology to. Autonomous driving, certainly a like, huge market potential, right? It would be changed to change the world. You know, founders want to change the world. Medical applications, absolutely, right? Especially in China, uh, because there's always this uh, difficulties in getting uh, enough good doctors. Uh, for, for many of the Chinese consumers. So if you can uh, uh, come up with a solution uh, that can uh, improve the productivity for the whole healthcare system, and that, that would be fantastic, right? So, uh, but beyond that, uh, there's also AI applications in, 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 you know, in internet, for example, right? I mean, I like to give the example of uh, our portfolio company, Total, Right, which is a it started out as a news news sort of a news app, and then now evolving into a a way for uh, uh, people to dis discover and re uh, receive information, and then they use a lot of the uh, artificial intelligence uh, uh, algorithms behind the scenes. So I think that's actually the probably the best application so far in China that has reached you know tens of millions of people. What are some other important and big AI companies that you have invested in China? Uh, I, I probably would have to keep that private <laughs> because all of them are still in a very early uh, uh, stage. So I think uh, 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 we need to give them some time for them to really you know, hone their products, figure out what should be the right uh, product, and, and most importantly, what are the uh, most suitable application areas for that particular company or that founding team. Uh, not everybody can do everything, so they have to find what's suitable for them to tackle. Are you worried about the evaluation bubble of uh, AI startups in China? Because we're seeing, you know, how valuations have gone up so much and to uh, pretty high levels. Uh, yes, uh, we are worried, right? I think the uh, just like any other new technology, when they sort of uh, came to the uh, when they become hot. Then the valuation bubble just it just came up, and I I think it's it's just a it's it's a fact that we have to learn to live with uh, throughout the cycles. I mean, uh, this from time to time, this is something new, something hard. Then the valuation tends to be a little bit more bubblish, and uh, as an investor, we just need to uh, be more disciplined in terms of you know finding the best founder that we like and finding the, uh, the, the, the technology or the applications that we think that could be the most promising and then uh, you know, invest in those companies. Well, thank you so much, Liu Xin, for your time. Thank you for watching.